Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel called Every Rock Has a Story. My name is Ethan Baxter, and I'm a professor of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Boston College. Now, the purpose of this video is to aid teachers and parents who might be thinking of incorporating some of my videos or all of my videos into educational curriculum for your children, for your students this coming fall, this summer, and into the future. Uh, so if you're watching this video, that means you probably found your way to my YouTube channel. Um, but I just want to check if you haven't yet seen one of the actual Every Rock Has a Story videos, I would encourage you to do that right now. Uh, you can find my channel by just searching Every Rock Has a Story or from this video, just look down below and there'll be a little circle with my picture in it. If you click on that, it'll take you right to my YouTube channel and you can watch uh, one or two of the videos. And then come on back to this teacher's guide. Um, and before I lose you, I just want to make sure you watch towards the end of this video because I'll be telling you about some new resources that I've created and posted on my website that will help you navigate my videos and more efficiently decide if and how to incorporate them in whatever lesson plans you might have at home or at school. You can find my website in the About section on the YouTube channel, which has a number of links to my website, including one for Every Rock Has a Story resources. So let me begin by telling you a little bit about what this is. What is Every Rock Has a Story? What have I created here? So I created these videos, this series of videos between May and June of the year 2020. And that was right at the peak of the COVID-19 crisis where a lot of us, including myself and my family, were, were stuck at home. Uh, usually this time of year, um, I've finished teaching my courses at Boston College and I spend a lot of time in K through 12 classrooms, mostly kindergarten, second grade, fourth grade, sixth grade classrooms, talking about the earth and geology and water and rivers and outer space and the rocks that stories tell. Well, this year those things all got canceled and a lot of the kids got sent home from school too. So I decided to create these videos of my way or as my way of contributing something to bring some of the science of the earth and the stories of the earth into kids' homes during this challenging time. And I've been so happy because the response I've received has really been super positive. Um, I've gotten great responses from kids, from parents, from teachers, from education professors, um, and I've gotten the endorsement and promotion from a lot of national organizations, the National Science Foundation, the Mineralogical Society of America, the American Geophysical Union, and the National Association of Geoscience Teachers have all promoted uh, my video series. So they seem to be working, they seem to be popular, um, and I'm so excited about that, that they might be useful uh, for kids and parents and teachers at home during this time and into the future. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit more about the videos. They're totally homemade. Uh, I got sent home with short notice too. This is my studio here at home. It's just me, my laptop, and my rocks. There's nothing else to it. Uh, so I hope you can forgive the amateurish cinematography uh, and video quality of the videos, but this is a homemade operation. Uh, I don't use a script in my Every Rock Has a Story videos. I do have a script today because I have a lot of information I want to communicate to you parents and teachers. Uh, I just tell stories that I've honed over the years in speaking to uh, kids and learners of all ages from kindergarten, high school, up to undergraduate, graduate, and even uh, my scientific community. So these are stories that I know well um, and I'll be telling you more about them. Uh, I do want to give another shout out to the National Science Foundation. While NSF hasn't explicitly funded this video series, NSF has funded most of my research and many of the rocks that I have here to show you were collected on NSF funded expeditions. So thanks to NSF for that support and that continued support and promotion of this video series as an educational resource. So the next thing I want to do is just tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm a very firm believer that everyone's perspective matters. I'm a very firm believer that everybody's perspective and observations should be appreciated and considered, uh, especially per the perspectives and observations from our children. Uh, and I just wanted to, for you to understand the lens 
through which I see rocks and the lens through which I'll be telling these stories and the set of experiences that I've had that have shaped my perspective. So first of all, uh, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I have two children, and by the time you're watching this video, my kids are gonna be a little bit older than they are right now. Um, I'm also a professor at Boston College, and as all professors, that means I have as my responsibilities teaching at the undergraduate and graduate level. I conduct my own independent research with my lab group and my students, and we publish that research. Um, and I participate in the service to our broader geoscience community um, and the university community. Uh, in my research, I'm an isotope geochemist. And what that means is that I use certain aspects of the chemical composition of rocks and minerals and earth materials, uh, usually rocks and minerals, to understand the Earth's past, its present, and project its future workings. So this also means that I'm largely a historian. I'm a history of the Earth, an Earth historian. And if you've watched my videos, you know that I love to learn the stories of the Earth and I'm passionate about communicating the stories of the Earth um, to audiences of all types and of all ages. And that passion for science communication is very important for me. Um, I've spent a lot of time in my career, as I mentioned, I think in my first video, learning uh, how you can extract these stories, learning the tools and the methods to extract and tell those stories. Uh, I got my undergraduate degree in geology and geophysics from Yale University. Um, I spent five years getting a PhD in geochemistry from University of California at Berkeley. And I did a two year postdoc at Caltech also in geochemistry. Uh, so that was a lot of time in preparation. That's allowed me to get into the research, the teaching and the service that I do. In terms of communicating my science, um, I've given over a hundred invited lectures at universities and institutions around the world talking about my research. I've been in Australia, China, uh, all over Europe and North America, but I've also spent a lot of time communicating the stories of the earth in my research to K through 12 audiences in my local community. Since about 2005, um, I've communicated with over 3000 K through 12 students and educators um, in bringing the stories of the earth and water and the environment um, and rocks and minerals to them. So if you want to learn more about me and my perspective and what shaped my perspective, you can go to my website, you can check out my academic CV and learn more about me. Um, next, I want to tell you my goals for this Every Rock Has a Story video series. Uh, I think very simply, my, my aim is to provide a resource, an educational resource for parents and teachers that you can use at home or at school to bring five things to our young learners, really five things. And I wanna go through those five things. I designed my videos to inspire our young learners about the earth and the environment and the geosciences. I wanna bring wonder, the wonder of the earth, a wonder that I think lives deep inside every human being, no matter who we are, and really bring out that wonder of the earth and the environment. I hope from that wonder springs forth genuine curiosity, questions about the earth, more, the, more about um, the why and the how and the who, and how does it matter to me? How does it impact me? Those questions spring forth from that curiosity. Uh, I really want to start to let our young learners feel the responsibility that each human has for the earth as stewards of the earth and the environment and understand our role as citizens of the earth. And last but not least, I really wanna send students away with the confidence that they can be scientists, that they can be geoscientists, the confidence to go out and ask those tough questions, to make some mistakes along the way, to learn from those mistakes and know how to think as scientists and grow into the future. So those are my, those are my goals, that I can provide you a few more tools to help bring some of these things to the students and the children in your lives. So,
In terms of who these videos are for, when I made them, I definitely decided to focus on an elementary school uh, audience, K through four primary audience. Um, so they're very introductory, they're entirely appropriate for all ages. And I think that's important to say, um, anybody can watch these. Younger kids, pre-K, um, elementary school, junior high, high school, adults can watch these too. I think that they really are fun. The feedback I've received is that they're fun and enjoyable for all ages. And I also like to think that this, the videos might be yet another way that might bring parents in, and their children closer together in conversation about the earth and the environment, conversations that might be sparked from my videos. And that brings me to the, the last part of the conversation I want to have with you right now. And that's maybe some suggestions about how you might use my videos and how you might navigate them to make your own best assessment about where they might fit in the educational programming that you have in mind for your children and for your students. The first thing I want to say is that these videos should be seen as a conversation starter, not the end of a conversation. They're short. Uh, this video of the teacher's guide is going to be longer, but all the other Every Rock Has a Story videos are between five and ten minutes long. That's a good length for the attention span of most kids. Um, and what I try to do is give you some ideas, maybe leave some unanswered questions or topics that you can pick up on if you want and delve more deeply into any of these topics. You're not going to get surprised by any inappropriate content for any age. Um, because I want you to decide how much further you want to take any one of the themes we get into. So please think of these as the beginning of a conversation, not an end. Um, second thing I want to emphasize, rocks and minerals are so much more than just identifying what they are. I know that when I was in school, a lot of the times the geology component was introduced as uh, a rock ID lab. Uh, I call it the scratch and sniff lab. You know, oh, this one's hard and this one's soft and, you know, this one fizzes and that one is gold or that one is green and that allows us to identify the rock and that's it. No, oh, gosh, don't stop there, okay? Identifying the rock is important, but that's just the very start of the exciting parts of earth and environmental sciences. It's the stories that those rocks tell once we identify them which is what these videos are about. So I really want you to help students see that there's more beyond just identifying what something is. And the real fun comes when we start to unlock those hidden stories that the rocks and minerals hold inside. Um, the videos, as you'll see, cover a very wide range of topics from climate and the atmosphere, the oceans, the land surface, mountains, the deep earth processes that drive many of those things and link them together. And so I really encourage you to look for the range of those topics and bring them out. I'll give you some suggestions how to, how to navigate that in a second. Um, you don't have to watch the videos in order. They're numbered from one uh, up to 44, uh, and they're ordered that way on the website. Um, you can watch them in order. Uh, there are a few cases where I will refer back to all previous videos in later ones. And maybe there's some value in watching in particular videos three, four, five, six, and eight. I think those are the videos that I probably refer back to the most, but it's not crucial. Any video can completely stand alone on itself. And you, if you wanted to, you could go back and look at another video later on if that interest is sparked. Um, so I also would encourage, as I do in my videos, uh, to consider having students make a science journal or a science journal page. Uh, this is something I've suggested in the videos. There's an example of one of uh, my science journal page examples for video number three about pyrite. Um, I write the name of the mineral, I draw a picture of the mineral, and then I draw some pictures of some words that just convey something about the story that came to me. Uh, now here's an example of one of the uh, first grader who watched that video number three, and you can see all the gold pyrite they drew and the, the red acid draining out of the mine. There's a miner there, and you can see the rain and the lightning coming down and causing that acid to, to flow out. That's just great. That's a great resource now that comes straight from the mind and the imagination of this first grader who put it into their own conceptualization. Here's some other uh, science journal pages from a first grade friend, Nora. There's the meteorite, that shooting star from video number one in the night sky, all the other stars. And this is a beautiful one about chalk from video number six. The chalk and all the CO2 gas inside, how that's linked to climate 
and the fossils as well in the ocean. So I think it's a great idea to encourage your students, if it makes sense, to draw and to explore the rocks and mineral stories in their own way. Um, I've also created a resource that I've posted on my personal website. So again, you can find my website on the YouTube channel by going to About, and there's a few web links down there. One of the things that I've created is an Excel spreadsheet. I, you, you can't read any of that right now, but this is a, a sortable and searchable Excel spreadsheet, has the names of all the videos, the numbers of all the videos, the name of the rocks that are featured in each video, and then it's got a bunch of topics featured. So if you're interested in a particular topic, you could sort through all the videos that way. So for example, if you wanted to know which videos have igneous rocks in them, you can sort that, or metamorphic or sedimentary rocks. If you wanted to know uh, which rocks involve uh, samples from one of Ethan's NSF expeditions, or um, about climate change, or about outer space, or fossils, or water, or pollution, or human impacts, or mining, you can sort for those topics and find the videos that would uh, correspond to those different topics. So this is, I think, a pretty useful resource for you to have at ready to navigate through and pick, you know, which video do I want to show for my lesson or my purpose for the day. Um, the other thing that I've posted on the website is this. This is uh, a picture that's just a JPEG image of all of the index cards labeling each sample from each video. They're numbered. So if you want to look at that and say, oh, you know, I want to hear the video about coal. That's number uh, 16. I think I'll go watch video number 16. You can do that that way too. You can show this to your students and they might pick the one they're interested in. And in addition, I've done this. There's a JPEG that shows all of the samples alone. You could show that to your students and say, pick which one you want to hear about, which one looks interesting. And then you will have this. That's the same picture annotated with the episode numbers that each sample corresponds to. So this, again, might allow you some tools to figure out how you choose, your students choose, which episode to watch. Um, so those are just some suggestions for how to navigate through the videos. You know your children and your students better than I do, but I hope these are gonna be some tools that help you decide how best to integrate and implement um, these videos in uh, your curriculum. Um, let me know how it's going. I'm really, really hoping that these are helpful, that they're useful to you and to the students, uh, the kids these days, who are going to certainly have experienced some challenging times during the COVID-19 shutdown. Um, that's going to end at some point, but my YouTube channel will stay up. So this is a lasting resource. It's a public resource. Um, I want people to know about it. So um, good luck with your teaching. We've got a really important job as teachers right now in bringing that engagement and inspiration to our students. And I think a lot about science in that regard. Uh, I really want my videos to help students realize that science is for everyone. Science is for them. Geoscience is for everyone. And anybody can be a scientist. My opinion is that what you need to be a scientist, these things. You need inspiration. You need to have that sense of wonder. Don't lose that sense of wonder. You need to have some genuine curiosity, responsibility, and a little bit of confidence to ask those questions, make some mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and grow as a scientist because that's what scientists do. Um, please do help me share this resource. Uh, if you know other teachers or parents, you know, email to them, tweet it, Instagram it, spread the word. I just want this to get out to people so it's helpful to them. And uh, if you and others find this as helpful in your teaching um, as I found it enjoyable to make, then I think together we've probably made a pretty positive impact. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy. Every Rock has a story and good luck out there with your teaching. Bye-bye.